So feel powerful with the NTA News Mobile app, the one-stop information center. Real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first-hand information on the U Report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTA News mobile app, your access to real-time information. Taxation, that depressing... <laughs> that the money be refunded to the state to cushion the effect. Governors ask for more money to do more. Presidency says no cause for apprehension over President Buhari's health. Also a challenge to image makers to checkmate pessimists. Plus, Senate open arms with workers for better life. Thanks for joining us on the NTA Network News for tonight. My name is Fumi Wakama. State governors have appealed to the federal government for the release of the second tranche of the Paris Club refund to enable them to keep up with their financial obligations in the state. This was part of resolutions taken at the National Economic Council meeting in Abuja. State House correspondent Jide Onifade has details. The governors in their submissions said the first disbursement of the Pari Club refund had enabled them pay salaries and meet other financial commitments. Minister of Finance Kemi Adioshun briefed the council on preparations for the next disbursement. The governors expressed appreciation to the president for the relief the Pari Club refund has brought to states. It not be seen as if the Paris Club is a favor done to states. These are monies, these are monies belonging to states. So the monies are belonging to the state. So what we are saying is that it was illegally taken about 12 years ago. So we want a refund of it. We are only asking that the money be refunded to the state to cushion the effect. The Minister of Finance gave the balance of the excess crude account as at April 26th as 2.2 billion US dollars. Council applauded the finance ministry whose efficiency unit has saved the country 17 billion naira and also urged states to emulate the ministry by establishing efficiency units to enhance operations and block leakages. Council was briefed on four of the social intervention programs of the Buhari administration. Council resolved to upgrade state coordination units and end obstacles affecting successful implementation in states. Natural Resource Fund balance as at 31st March 2017 was 70.9 billion. Ecological Fund balance as at that date was 33.6 billion. States and local government now to keep their share of the Resource Fund and Ecology Fund for use for intervention as the need arises in their respective jurisdictions. Council expressed grave concern over the ravaging effects of the meningitis epitome in parts of the country and directed the Federal Minister of Health to intensify its intervention efforts to contain the embarrassing epidemic while advocating for increased funding for health. National Security Advisor Babagana Mungunu briefed the Council on the security situation of the country. Basically, the security agencies have commenced a general crackdown a nationwide crackdown against gunmen, cattle wrestlers, armed militants, as well as other restless uh, militia groups in the country. The governors in their response have acknowledged the efforts of the federal government in trying to curb these uh, activities. They've also agreed to collaborate further with the security agencies in dealing with these uh, issues. The National Economic Council meeting was presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. In the State House, Jide Onifade 
NT News. Elsewhere, the Supreme Court has been approached for an interpretation of Niger's deep offshore oil revenue sharing contract between the federal government and oil exploration companies. This is to forestall a further loss of oil revenue by Nigeria and its federated states. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewo has that report. Section 16, subsection 1 of the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act imposes a statutory obligation on the federal government to adjust the share of the government of the Federation if the price of crude oil at any time exceeds $20 per barrel. Realizing by this law that they too can be beneficiaries, three states of the Federation, Rivers, Bielsa and Aqua Ibom states have now dragged the federal government before the nation's apex court, seeking an interpretation of that section, which will trigger the recovery of the nation's oil revenue. So a ceiling, a cap was put in the enactment enabling these contracts to $20. In other words, in case it doubles up to at the worst case. But if it should go beyond $20 a barrel, that even the 60-40 ratio in the contract shall now be reviewed. Admitting that this is not a hostile case, counsel to the federal government says the government will need the input of its oil agencies to respond. Our position as a federal government of Nigeria is dependent on the information or details we get from our stakeholders in the oil industry. The matter is now adjourned to November this year for commencement of hearing. Being a constitutional matter, seven justices of the Supreme Court, led by Justice Rhodes Bible, are hearing the matter. The Supreme Court is yet again being called upon through the exercise of its original jurisdiction to salvage Nigeria, this time from its economic problems. Since so far, no one has thought it fit to trigger the use of Section 16, Subsection 1 of the Oil Revenue Sharing Formula. From the Supreme Court, Femi Okewo, NTA News. The controversy surrounding the missing documents relating to the 2017 Appropriation Bill, notwithstanding, Senate Leader Hamid Ibrahim Lawan is assuring Nigerians that there is nothing to worry about as the Senate is determined to pass the budget in good time for implementation. He said this after an audience with President Muhammadu Buhari. State House Correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. The Senate leader, Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, was in the State House to confer with President Muhammad Buhari on new as well as pending executive bills and requests before the National Assembly to enable him lobby his colleagues effectively for easy passage at plenary. Their discussions held behind closed doors lasted about 45 minutes. There should be continuous engagement, continuous and sustained interaction between the executive side of government and the legislature, uh, especially at the level we are. And that is essentially why I've come to see Mr. President, to ensure that I get uh, my briefings right so that I can always uh, market uh, the presidential and executive requests so well and so effectively. Senator Ahmed Lawan used the forum to allay fears in some quarters that following the raid on the residence of Senator Danjuma Goje, who chairs the Senate Committee on Appropriation, further action on the 2017 budget is put on hold. He said although the process has been affected with the allegations of missing documents coupled with the trauma the lawmaker had to go through, work on the budget has not been suspended. There is nothing to worry about. The, the National Assembly uh, had intended to pass the budget actually in, in, in March, but because of some of the parameters that we had little or no control over, we couldn't pass it in March. It was our design and desire to pass it within this month, April, and all of you here know what happened. But the, the good news is we are doing everything possible to ensure that uh, we catch up the, the lost uh, time. Uh, and uh, by the grace of God, uh, I'm thinking by next we should be able to finish our own work and uh, pass the budget uh, for Mr. President to sign. President Muhammad Buhari was also briefed by the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, on efforts at improving the arteries of development as critical sector of the economy.
the mandate is clear, fix the railways, fix the airports, ensure that the uh, maritime sector works. And it's a huge approval that he had given on the maritime sector in terms of a new architecture of security. I can't say whether we're doing well or not, but I can see that we're, we're fixing the railways. In the next two, three weeks, we'll be coming back to Federal Executive Council to seek approval to conclude negotiation with GE on the narrow gauge. And once that is done, what you will see before by May 29th is that we'll begin to bring in coaches and locomotives that will begin to go at least at a very slow speed until we are able to improve on the tracks. The other thing happening is that the Lagos Ibadan railway is already ongoing, so construction has commenced. What we're working hard on is to ensure that we uh, focus on uh, Kano Kaduna and Portakot Kalaba. That we're looking for funds from the China Exim Bank. You're aware that Abuja Airport is operational now. We're going to focus again on the others. And finally, I'm sure that you are aware that, it, like the Vice President did announce at the AMA program, that we want to deal with the issue of piracy and security in our waterways. Mr. Rotimi Amechi's meeting with the President lasted about one hour. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the presidency has assured Nigerians that despite the insinuation of a number of media organizations, there's no need for apprehension over the health of President Muhammad Buhari. In a statement, the senior special assistant to the president, Garbashio, says President Buhari's absence at the Federal Executive Council meeting of Wednesday was a last-minute decision. Otherwise, the cabinet and the public would have been alerted in advance. He noted that as eager as he was up and about, the president's doctors have advised on his taking things slowly as he fully recovers from the long period of treatment in the United Kingdom some weeks ago. The statement further adds that President Buhari himself on his return to the country made Nigerians aware of the state of his health while he was in London and that full recovery is sometimes a slow process requiring periods of rest and relaxation. As the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, intimated in his press briefing after the Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. The spokesperson assures that President Buhari is, has not abdicated his role as Commander in Chief as he receives daily briefings on the activities of government and confers regularly with the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. And the change promised Nigerians by the All Progressive Congress, APC, is evidently manifesting in various areas of the economy. This was the consensus of opinion at the public presentation of a book, All Progressive Congress, The Making of a Change Agent, by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Prosecution, Okoye Obono Obla. Ilyasu Ali Yakubo reports. Party members recall the holders crossed in a series of failed alliances and mergers of political parties with the aim of defeating a sitting government. They said the making of the APC, however, weathered the storm despite severe difficulties to hamper the emergence of the party, which led to the eventual victory at the presidential elections in 2015. In his message, National Chairman of the APC, Chief John Odigi Oyegun, said the documentation of the making of APC will benefit children yet unborn. One good thing about putting thoughts and youth together is that it gives you an opportunity to put what happened on paper for posterity coming from your own perspective. Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, and Data of Communications, Adebayo Shitu, as well as Niger Delta Affairs, Osani Uguru Osani, said the change promised by APC has manifested basically in three areas, which include fighting insurgency, corruption, as well as economic diversification. The message of the book reviewer, Minister of Solid Minerals, Kayo De Fayemi, advised Nigerians and the rest of Africa to take advantage of the book for improved governance. It is a research material that I think one recommends to everybody. The author, Okoye Obono Abla, said he is fulfilled having participated in the making of the party and eventual victory at the polls and leaving behind a document to keep history alive. Tomorrow, revisionists will begin to distort the story. In Abuja, 
Eliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has challenged public relations practitioners to rise above board and contain those he described as naysayers who see nothing good in governance for the simple reason that they are not in power. The minister stated this at the annual national conference and general meeting of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations holding in Ilori, the Kwara State capital. Anthony Forson reports. Describing the public relations practitioners as perception managers, the Information and Culture Minister said it is a tough and near impossible job that is further threatened by the vicious activities of operators of today's new media. There could be friends today and opponents tomorrow. They are not interested in the vision of the government nor the welfare of the people. That and sin. He said their mode of operation has earned them a huge followership, a situation that is detrimental to society. As a government spokesperson, you must not allow yourself to be distracted. You must be proactive rather than be defensive. You must refuse to allow them to set your agenda for you. Given the level of the proliferation of such unprofessional New World Media practitioners, they have continued to dish out falsehood to the public, whose conscience have been eroded by these fake news dealers. La Mohammed said, irrespective of the platform upon which the government information managers operate from, such persons must be equipped with integrity, courage, capacity for hard work, ingenuity, resourcefulness, and the ability to think outside the box as well as remaining incorruptible. Kwara said Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed, who was represented by the State Commissioner for Information and Communication, said Kwara State has leveraged on the efficacy of a robust information flow to design a development pattern for the state through revenue generation. Use this conference to chart a way to using communication to promote new national values and positive behaviors generate recognition and patronage and build very robust development and high level of sustainability that our great grandchildren will meet, enjoy and appreciate. The minister performed the investiture of new fellows of the institute and Ilori Anthony Forson, NTA News. And for Nigeria's economy to thrive and overcome recession and its vestiges, there is no option than to move away from mono-economic system that is hugely dependent on oil. This issue came to the fore at the former public presentation of the Daily Stream newspaper with the consensus that diversification of the economy should be imperative at this time. Political correspondent Abdullahi Garba Brininkudu brings us details. Nigeria's nationhood as the exigencies of its economy form the focal point of discussion with a view to procuring viable suggestions on salient areas of the country's national life for the better. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar in a paper, The Challenges of Unity, Diversity and National Development, Nigeria at Crossroads, dwelt heavily on devolution of power for better efficiency. He said states and local governments should be active participants in the running of the economy with less concentration of burden on the central government. In that connection, Atiku Abubakar says restructuring of some fabrics in the polity and governance should be considered, but cautioned that there should be no move, no matter how little, to compromise the sanctity of the corporate existence of the nation. We should remain together because it is the best option I remain unshaken and completely persuaded that we can eventually change the story of Nigeria for good. Former President of the Senate, Ken Innamani, who presided, believes in the indivisible entity of Nigeria, being the giant of Africa, which has greater future far beyond the knowledge of many people. How far have we gone since the end of the war? 50 years ago, almost. Does it make sense any person who participated in that exercise? Not many of them will advocate for another war. Not many. Issues concerning the role of the first estate in the economy, the media, also came under close examination of which practitioners are advised to avoid sensationalism at this trying period of Nigeria as a nation, 
during which objectivity and value reorientation are needed as veritable ingredients for development. This was the message of Sepika Yakubu Dogara. To be professional, you have to also avoid yellow journalism. To be professional, you must also have to avoid distractions. The Daily Stream newspaper was established in 2015 by a group of professional journalists in Abuja. Abdullahi Gerba Kudu, NTA News. The Senate has resolved to constitute a hard hoc committee to synergize with relevant stakeholders to critically examine ways of improving welfare of Nigerian workers. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Ziyano reports that the resolution followed a motion moved by Senator Suleiman Naziv, APC of, from Bauchi State. Following a point of order, Senator Suleiman Naziv described the 18,000 Naira minimum wage as grossly inadequate, pointing out that something commensurate should be offered with a view to motivating the workers and curb corruption. The government is meant to cushion the effect of hardship on its workers by paying great attention to their welfare needs. In various contributions, some senators condemned the inability of most states to offset salary arrears of their workers in spite of the bailouts from the federal government. Because of corruption, they don't get what they deserve. When it comes to welfare, they still suffer. If allowances and other benefits are not paid to workers, one wonders where we should call for the productivity of workers. By the government to specifically establish a surveillance unit that will ensure proper and timely delivery of all the necessary welfare packages to Nigerian workers. Outside plenary, the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on Mounting Humanitarian Crisis in the Northeast says its report is ready for submission. However, Chairman of the Ad Hoc Committee, Shen Sushiu Sani, said the report will not contain the testimonies of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, David Babachirulawal, on the allegations of financial misappropriation of a company in which he was allegedly directly involved. We are here since 10 o'clock, waiting for him, and it's now 12 o'clock. It's clear to us that uh, he is not appearing. So as far as we are concerned, we will certainly go ahead and present our report. In the meantime, members of the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees took their local government autonomy campaign to the National Assembly. They call for the entrenchment of accountability and efficient local government administration. And that there must be credibility in the democratic process in the local government. Chairman Senate Committee on State and Local Government Administration, Senator Abdullahi Gumel, addressed the workers and promised to extend the demands to the Senate. From the National Assembly, Waziri Zayan, NTA News. And still at the National Assembly, the House of Representatives has passed for a third reading a bill for an act to amend the Psychiatric Hospital Management Board Act. The legislators also passed for second reading a bill for an act to authorize the provision of free prenatal and postnatal health care services to pregnant Nigerian women in government hospitals. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports. Early and regular prenatal care is the cornerstone of a healthy pregnancy. Therefore, access to such service should not be restricted in whatever form. This perhaps informed the decision of the members of House of Representatives to consider a bill that will ensure free provision of pre- and postnatal care for Nigerian women. The bill is sponsored by Representative Tony Woye from Anambra State. Some pregnant women even at birth, when they deliver their children, at birth, cannot even afford the cheapest thing, which is immunization at birth, BCG. A lot of these women shy away from going to hospitals because of the little amount they have to pay. The issue of suppression of powers resonated on the floor as members stressed the need for strict observance of the doctrine of suppression of powers. This came in a motion moved by the minority leader, Leo Ogo. And I think, you know, we should take a holistic analysis of it in protecting the doctrine of separation of, of powers. The very doctrine of separation of powers, which is the essence of presidential democracy. Being the repository of the representative will of the Nigerian people to jealously guard and protect 
the supremacy of the Constitution. The House resolved to investigate the alleged disappearance of some petroleum products valued at 11 billion naira belonging to the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, moved by Representative Yusuf Tajuddin from Kogi State. Members condemned an attack at the residence of Senator Dino Melaye on the 15th of April 2017. Representative Etan Bora from Cross River State moved that the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, provide relief materials for the victims of electrocution at the football viewing center in Calabar. The House observed the minute silence in honor of those who lost their lives in the incident and let Michael Akinjo, father of one of its members, Representative Victor Akinjo, the Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Abdrazak Namdas, later briefed National Assembly correspondents on why Senator Andrew Magoje took some of the 2017 budget document to his house. If you work on a document and you feel you are tired, you want to go home with some of this document and still work on it, there's nothing wrong with that. He assured Nigerians that the National Assembly will strive to ensure that the budget is passed on record time. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Senate, Ita Enang has confirmed that all items taken from the residence of the Chairman Senate Committee on Appropriations, Danjuma Goje, in the course of police routine duties have been safely returned to the Senator. I am to confirm that further to the police routine duties, wherein they have visited the um, residence of His Excellency Senator Danjuma Goje that all the items that were taken from the house of the distinguished senator has been returned to him by the police in his house. Interacting with all the party distinguished senators, after the return of the items, they are assured that this development will lead to a quicker, faster passage of the budget. Senator Ita Inang said all other issues relating to the subject matter are being addressed with a view to a positive resolution. He also was appreciative of the efforts of both chambers of the National Assembly towards ensuring quick passage of the 2017 Appropriation Bill. President Mohamed Buhari is commiserated with the family of former Minister of Education, Professor Babalola Burishade, who died on Wednesday. In a statement, the senior special assistant to the president, Garba Sheo, President Mohamedou sends his condolences to the government and people of Ikita State, professional colleagues, political associates, and friends of the renowned academic and political strategist, whose antecedents in the academ in the academia, in the academia and public service, he noted, will continue to speak for generations to come. The president described Burishade as a patriot who diligently served as a minister in four ministries. President Buhari also recalls the unwavering support of the septuagenarian to the policy team of the All Progressives Congress and its contributions to ensuring victory at the polls for the party in 2015. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Still to come, trial of Senate President stalled again. Details when we come back. When the kings of African comedy gather under one roof, there's only one outcome. Then we bring down the roof. Witness the craziest <laughs> and the funniest, the oh my god, and the baddest of them all. Laughter will scatter your brain well, well. Come watch the biggest names in African comedy at Glow Laughter Fest. Basket Mouth, Bovi, I Go Die, Chey Law, Gordons, Salvador, Osama, Bash, Kenny Black, and many more. You will never have a bigger gathering of jaw dropping, rip cracking comedians under one roof. One microphone, one network. All over Nigeria. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. I am gonna be there. I'm going to be there. Live and direct. For the time of your life. Will you? To win a free ticket, use 2000 Naira in a month and text LOL and your preferred location to 240. Oh, 
a fist. Love go kill you, die. Too true. <laughs> Glow Unlimited. <laughs> The Second National Universities Commission quarterly lecture will hold on Wednesday, 4th May 2017 at 10 a.m. Venue is the Idris Abdukadrin Auditorium, NUC Secretariat, Maitama Abuja. The lecture titled, On the March to Reinvent the Curricula of Nigerian Universities for Improved Relevance and Global Competitiveness, will be declared open by the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu. Chairman of Education is former President, Chief Olushegun Obasanjo, or Vice Chancellors, Chairman, and members of both the Senate and House of Committees of Education and all other stakeholders are invited. For online participation, visit www.nuc.edu.ng to register before 1st May 2017. Ibrahim Usman Yakasai, Director, Information and Public Relations, announcer. You don't need to serve plenty computer. Just serve damn special eight keys way there on top computer. A, B, C, D for to take answer question. P for preview or back. N for next or forward. Double click S for submit. And arrow for return or reverse. And send or form. Not be six months again, no. Now only one month. From March 20 to April 19. But then don't extend registration until May 5, 2017. So that applicants go get better opportunity to register. And optional mock exam now April 29. Examination now 13 to 20 of May 2017. No more scratch card, though. Buy your pin at approved banks and waka go any approved jump CBT center for registration. No wuru wuru plus mago mago for jump again, no. If you don't read well, well, you go fail. This message is by Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, enhancing academic excellence. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. This is to inform the general public that 2017 admission and registration into all programs and courses of the National Teachers Institute, NTI, is still open until May 31, 2017. You can apply and register for NCE, ADE, bachelor's degree, and PGDE through the new portal of the institute at www.nti.edu.ng. The general public is invited to note that all courses of the institute are duly approved by the relevant regulatory bodies. Kindly use the unique opportunity of this extension to apply for the courses of your choice and register before May 31st deadline. Payment could be made through any bank of your choice or remitter platform. Professor Garba Dahua Azari, Director General and Chief Executive, NMSA. The NTA Arena comes alive once again as NTA Entertainment and the Crum Dance Studio celebrate World Dance Day. Date 28th of April 2017, venue, NTA Arena, era 11, Garki, Abuja, time, 6 p.m. This event is powered by Doxa Digital and supported by Star Times, Hat Connect, Reeves Water, and Royal Chops. Don't miss out. Jesus in the West, Jesus in the North, and the South. Hello, I'm Cyril Stoba. Let me introduce you to my colleague, incisive reporter and vibrant minister of gospel music, Saint Ruben Okara. In the newsroom, we call him the Saint. Yes. Everywhere you go. I'd like to invite you to the public presentation of Breaking News. That's a music album by Saint Ruben Okara. And it's all taking place on Saturday, the 29th of April, 2017, at the Cultural Center, Area 10, Abuja. It's at 4 o'clock in the evening. See you there. You're still watching NTA Network News. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu says the commission 
will recruit 44,000 Haddock staff for the continuous voter registration exercise in the country's 774 local government areas. It was at the flag off of the Abuja Municipal Council area with explanations on the modalities. Political correspondent Ifai Okafo reports. The flag of the continuous voter registration exercise in Abuja Municipal Council area by INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu signals the beginning of the exercise nationwide. The INEC Chairman says the process which begins at the local government levels will hold at the 8,809 wards and 120,000 polling units across the country. It is open to one Nigerian citizens who have now attained the age of 18 years. Citizens who for one reason or another did not register in the previous elections. With registered voters for 2015 general elections totaling about 476,628 in Amak alone, concerned citizens of the area urged the commission to consider the plight of the fiscally challenged and to ensure that they are not disenfranchised. In Abuja, Ifai Okafo, NTA News. Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, says the federal government is committed to the revival of the country's premier cement industry, the Nigeria Cement Company in Nkalago. It was while he was inspecting the premises of the company as part of his nationwide tour of concerns under his ministry. Chinaza John reports. The Nigeria Cement Company in Nkalago, which used to be a major producer of cement in the country, collapsed due to maladministration, undue interference and neglect by its owners. The Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Dr. Kayo Defayemi, assured the core investor of federal government's determination to bring the factory back on stream before the shortest possible time, stressing that local production remains the answer to a robust economy. This speaks to everything that we have identified in our roadmap that we've been pushing at every opportunity, that local processing and beneficiation is the solution to our industrialization agenda and our diversification program. A Boeing State Governor, Chief David Omahi, who expressed contentment at the efforts of the federal government, said the state government will extend the access road project to Benue state boundaries. So our position as government is that Airborne State should be part and parcel of whatever thing that is going on. The co-investor of the company, Dr. Cletus Ibetu, pleaded with the federal government to help the company assess foreign exchange for the total overhaul and revamping of the company. He said that so far, 94 million U.S. dollars have been spent towards the reactivation of Niger Sen. We also have no doubt that from this is, we want to ignite action. Dr. Fayemi, in company of the Minister of State, Dr. Abubakar Bawabuari, also visited other mining sites in Abakaliki and Iku Council areas of the state. In Abakaliki, China Zajon, NT News. The federal government has declared Monday, 1st of May, as public holiday to commemorate the 2017 Workers' Day celebration. This is in a statement by the director overseeing the office of the permanent secretary, Mohamedou Machido. It says the Minister of in Interior, Abdurrahman Dambazao, who made the declaration on behalf of the federal government, congratulates Nigerian workers for their resilience, hard work and commitment to the government of President Mohamedou Buhari, despite the current challenges. And still staying with workers towards the sustainability of federal government housing policy, a memorandum of understanding has been signed between the Federal Government Staff Housing Authority Loan Board and the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company. Adibola Brooklyn Sunday has details. Executive Secretary of the Federal Government Staff Housing Loans Board, Anatufika, signed on behalf of the board while Professor Charles Iyangete signed for Nigerian Mortgage Refinancing Company. Also, these traditional sources of finance cater for others outside the civil service, hence their capacity to meet the demands of civil servants are limited and they urgently require recapitalization. This is just the first phase of the loan. 
because it's going to be continuous uh, as we are working very closely with the Central Bank of Nigeria so that this mortgage reorigination will be a continuous thing. So new construction can take place and new mortgages can be created. The memorandum of understanding is expected to reduce the housing deficit in Nigeria, especially as it affects public servants. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And turning to the judiciary, the trial of Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki at the Code of Conduct Tribunal has again been stalled for the third time due to the inability of the prosecution to present their witnesses before the tribunal. Aliu Tukur has details. Resuming the Senate President's trial over alleged false declaration of assets, prosecution counsel Rotimi Jacobs informed the tribunal that his witness for the day, who happens to be Saraki's account officer, is unavailable. He said while the bank where the witness works sent in the document the prosecution counsel requested. The witness did not show up. This, he said, is as a result of the fact that the witness had undergone a surgery which was not successful and had to return to the operation table. Reacting to the submission of the prosecution, the defense counsel, Paul Irokoro, said, the move is an indication that the prosecution has run out of options. As such, he urged that it should close its case. The prosecution counsel defended his position and promised that he will bring the witness to the tribunal. The chairman of the tribunal, Aladi Umar, adjourned the case to the 4th of May in Abuja, Aliu Tukuru, NTA News. For the federal government to squarely address the humanitarian crisis, especially in the Northeast, and prevent childhood killer diseases, the active participation of the private sector is key. This was at the immunization exercise and distribution of food items at the Aso Guruku Internally Displaced Persons Camp in Mararaba, outskirts of Abuja. Mia Ogidi reports. <laughs> Nigeria, spearheaded by the federal government, is grappling fast to be certified free from polio by the World Health Organization. This situation calls for collective efforts by all, especially at this time. The world marks the 2017 Immunization Week from 24th and 30th of this month. This informed the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC, in flagging off this immunization exercise at the Aso Guruku Interfaith IDP camp in Mararaba, Nasarawa State. The immunization will prevent them from the other diseases like malaria, uh, fever. Mosquito net. I will wear it for my uh, room because it will help me for mosquito. It cannot bite me again. Though it's part of AEDC's corporate social responsibility, it further demonstrates its commitment to the belief that strengthening the health system is key to breaking the cycle of extreme poverty, disease, and kickstarting a vicious cycle of health, productivity, and prosperity. We have come to share our strength with them by providing food items, by providing some little immunization so that the children who are the weakest link among them do not fall prey to preventable diseases. Beyond the immunization, AEDC also donated food and household items as well as clothes to the IDPs. Mie Ogidi, NTNews. And as part of its corporate social responsibilities, makers of Mortin insect killers have partnered with the Federal Ministry of Health to commemorate the 2017 World Malaria Day in Abuja. Morjana to Adam Said reports that Mortin natural guard liquid electric device and other products were presented to the public. Malaria caused by plasmodium parasite is one disease that has killed more lives in Nigeria than other diseases put together. Women and children are said to be more vulnerable to this disease as 69% of malaria deaths around the world in 2015 were traced to children under five years of age. It is against this background that makers of motin insecticide continue to produce products that will rid the society of mosquitoes to fight the malaria scourge. A few years back when we looked at the statistics, Nigeria was about 23% of the global malaria cases. 
and there is one child who dies every two minutes from malaria. 11% of those cases are maternal deaths. So the only way to address this is to come together to fight malaria. Mortin is a, is a, is a world player when it comes to, uh, to insecticide. This uh, insecticide actually kills mo mosquitoes very, very fast. That's why we can say we kill mosquitoes instantly. To the Nigerian citizen, I believe that we need a clean environment. All of us must live in a clean environment. Drain stagnant water and sleep under long-lasting insecticide-treated net. Motin is a household insecticide spray, as the product on a say has a good combination that has gained public acceptability due to its efficacy. In Abuja, Murijanatu, Adam, Said, NTN News. The Nigerian Air Force has appointed a new spokesman to manage its public affairs. His Air Commodore Ola Tumbo, Ola Tokumbo Adesoya, the new Director of Public Relations and Information, replaces the former Air Force spokesman, Group Captain Ayodele Famuyewa. This is contained in a statement by Wing Commander Joel Abioye. We now join Vera in Lagos for more on NTA Network News. A very good evening to you, Vera. Are you for me? Good evening and welcome to Lagos. Dangote Sugar Refinery has posted an impressive performance in the company annual report and accounts for the year 2016. The growth is attributed to the commitment of the management in implementing its strategic initiatives and utilizing its resources to brace through economic slowdown and deliver excellent results while maintaining its industry position in the market. To this end, management of the company declared a total of 7.2 billion naira dividend payout to shareholders. The expression on the faces of the shareholders reflects their delight over a bountiful harvest as Dangote Sugar Refinery PLC says it will continue to consolidate on its strength to deliver superior returns. The company's performance in 2016 clearly shows that Dangote Sugar Refinery realized a group turnover of 169 billion naira, 68% higher than the comparative period in 2015. As a result, shareholders unanimously approved 60 cobalt dividend per share for every ordinary share declared by the management. They have consistent dividend policy and they are very, very solid. I think it's a very, very good uh, dividend and people are, the shareholders are very happy. The management of the company believing consistent good returns to its shareholders remains paramount. We have budgeted to invest over 106 billion naira in the backward integration which I believe it will happen in the uh, next three, four years. They are actually going to start producing sugar locally. By going to produce locally, we are going to generate a lot of employment. We are going to generate ethanol, which is needed for the blending of our gasoline. Dangote Sugar Refinery PLC says its goal is to achieve the capacity to produce 1.5 million tons of refined sugar annually from locally grown sugar cane, while remaining a global force in sugar production for the benefit of its consumers and shareholders. You're still watching NTA News. We take a break now for some messages. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. Let's pepper Dev. So tell somebody to tell everybody to come join Tamaya, baby. Are they bring too much sauce? No mega music talk. It's gonna be a mad over your tail. You're ready to win a show. Stop us. I am your host for the biggest show ever. So miss the stuff. I'm gonna miss everything. So join me, guys. Let's turn it up. We'll be storming across Nigeria. I won't be anywhere else. Everyone who is anyone is going to be there. All Nigerians, all these musicians. One big stage. Live and direct. No mega music tour all over Nigeria. So watch out because we they come. Let's go! It's the Glow Mega Music Tour with your favorite anchors and special guest stars. It's going to be untamed. Text music and your preferred location to 207. Use 2000 Naira Glow Airtime in one month to stand in line for your free ticket. So what are you waiting for? The Glow Mega Music Tour. Glow Unlimited. 
this must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. now comes in an attractive new 500 gram refill pack. Simply open and reseal after use to retain the chocolatey and creamy taste. Cadbury Born Vita. Prepare to win. Everyday air. Ordinary air. And then Tom Tom Air. There's air, and then there's Tom Tom Air. What are you breathing? New Tom Tom Fighters Pack. Coca-Cola, but you have to drink it here. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliampere battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. You're still watching the NTA Network News, and we begin this segment with business news. Federal government assures that it will do more to account for missing taxis and recovered loot. Here are details on business news as we join Muplang Dakok. Hello there, welcome to business news. The external reserves of the country now stands at about $31 billion as the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, continues to supply dollars at the interbank and parallel markets. Latest data from the CBN for April shows that the reserves recorded a 1.5% increase from $30.307 billion and now stands at $30.702 billion, the highest since January. The federal government has reassured Nigerians that the cash recorded in its anti-corruption drive will not be relooted. Minister of Finance Kemi Adioshun stated this in a media conference on the World Bank IMF spring meetings in Washington, D.C. We don't intend at this stage to introduce new taxes because actually the taxes we have are quite adequate. The problem, as you said, is enforcement. The minister said, with the 2017 budget at hand, recovered funds are already being plunged into the economy and the Economic Recovery Group plan will bring forth the fruition of a stronger and resilient economy. At Nigeria's capital markets today, the All Share Index appreciated by 0.52%.
And that's the package on business news at this time. I am Moplang Dakok. And still to come, happenings in the global scene and sports. We'll be back shortly. It's in the air. It's data. It's what you use every time you download music. It's what streams movies. It's what the banks use to check your account. It's the very lifeblood of modern living. Data. And where does it all come from? According to industry sources, more and more of it came from here. They acknowledge that Glow is now the largest data network in Nigeria. With your own Glow One submarine cable linked seamlessly to tens of thousands of kilometers with your own fiber optic cable. Glow can provide a huge data capacity anywhere at a more flexible and affordable price than anyone. It's simple. So you see, Glow is in the air. It's everywhere. Say hello to the Grandmaster. Enjoy the fastest 3G and 4G data speed nationwide at the same price. Dial star 777 hash. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. Glad to know you're still there. Let's now join Talatu Ezrike on Global Tidbits. Kenya's veteran politician Rila Odinga has been confirmed to be the main opposition candidate in August presidential election. Mr. Odinga, who is running the fourth time for the presidency, will represent the National Super Alliance, a coalition of the country's main opposition parties. Still on political issues, German Chancellor Angela Merkel says some British people have illusions about discussing UK's future ties with the EU at the same time as nailing down UK's Brexit terms. This comes as the Israeli missile strike caused a large explosion and fire at a military site near Damascus International Airport. That is an unglobated bit. Talat Izriki, NTA News. And Tamara Ebiwe is next with Sports Update. 